This is Tony Brewer and LaBeth Brewer, and this is The Mindful Soul, Episode 2. We're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk about children. We're going to talk about a plethora of things, anxiety, and all kinds of good stuff. So, LaBeth, say hi to the folks. Happy Saturday. How's everybody doing? So, we are in Manchester, Tennessee at the Holiday Inn Express, and I am up here. Uh, I'm speaking at the Woodbury Church of or the the uh, what's it? It's Auburn Hills. The Auburn Hills Church of Christ in yeah. Woodbury, Tennessee. Uh, talking about evangelism and such. But anyway. We came up here a little bit early to just kind of like get away. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe to print, you know, last time we talked about burnout. And it was kind of one of those things where we're like, okay, we kind of need to get away from the house for a couple extra days. Absolutely. And so we're going to use this, what I guess we could call it like a business trip, but a part pleasure trip because we were able to just... Um, get away one day early and take a break from home stuff. I don't know about you, but when I'm at home, I even if I'm sitting still and trying to relax, I might be thinking about 10 or 12 or 20 different things that I probably should be doing rather than just sitting. That's right. Thinking about all that stuff you you need to do, thinking about your to-do list. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't really get good rest. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a that's a hard thing. Yeah. Um so we're fortunate enough to be able to use these little times to get away and take an extra day and chill out in a hotel room where we don't have to worry about cleaning and cooking and all of those um, daily activities. Absolutely. Um, So we're going to talk about mental health issues. We're going to talk about anxiety. We had a lot of good conversations on the way up here, didn't we? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, about how to deal with anxiety, about uh, storing up anger, storing up malice wrath mm-hmm. um you know a lot of times as uh well the youth the youth day or mm-hmm. the not the youth day what's it called the summer youth series was at bay um thursday night and my lesson was about comparison and uh the theme was the makings of a murderer and it's it came from that um it came from that that netflix show the the making, making of a murderer yeah the yeah. making making a murderer or whatever yeah. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to give the the children a series of lessons about um, the steps it takes in the progression to killing your brother. Yeah. And the more I studied, the more I thought, the more I took it like, well, if you compare, my, my, my subject was comparison. And in my opinion, comparison is the first, is the first step on the road to murdering your brother. Yes. And the reason I say that is because comparison comes before you feel envy. Comparison comes before you feel jealousy. Comparison comes before you feel anger. You don't feel anything. Comparison comes before you feel discontent. Right. Yeah. It's really the first step. It's the very first step. So if I see somebody and I see, if I compare myself to somebody, then all of a sudden I'm comparing what I have. And then I'm thinking about what I don't have. Yeah. And then I'm discontent. Then I'm jealous, then I'm envious, then I covet, then I, I'll cut that person down. And I can't, I'm probably not going to physically take what he has that I want because I'm not stupid. I know that I couldn't enjoy it, right. but I don't want him to enjoy it either. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work against him and I'm going to cut the legs out from under him. And uh, my way of making everybody equal is to bring everybody down to my level. Right. That's just what happens in that situation. It's that progression of um, instability and it's that pro- progression of discontentment. Absolutely. Um, so I'm I'm sure you deal with stuff like that in the in the therapy room. Yeah, it's so interesting because a lot of times, um, we're not, um, right now, my main population that I'm working with is small children and their families. Um, but in really in any situation, even in that one, but most of the time when adults seek counseling on their own, they're going to come into the counseling room or they're going to seek counseling. And it's usually because somebody else has made their life hard and they don't know how to deal with it. Right. They don't usually come in and say, um, you know, they don't usually attribute whatever problem it is. The problem that they have is not usually attributed to something that they have done. It's right. usually something that somebody else has done. I mean, even even with the small children, the parents say, oh, I'm here, you know, because the school referred me because he's having a hard time at school. Mm-hmm. 
it's never really I need I'm seeking help because I need to perfect my counsel my my parenting skills. Correct. You know. Well, yeah, and, and well, that's that's the first step in getting better is to realize your culpability in the situation mm-hmm. that you're in. I don't care what situation. Right. You've exactly. You've got to figure out what, what did your, I what do, role. what role did I play mm-hmm. in being in the situation. Yeah. Regardless, if that if 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 uh, out of a if if there's two people at fault, one might be ninety nine percent at fault, and the other might be only one percent at fault. But the one who's only one percent at fault, if they don't realize they're one percent, they'll never move past it. Right. Right. They'll never move past. We've it. had conversations about this in many different areas, mm-hmm. but it's definitely true. Uh, and that's that's the thing, like about a therapeutic session, mm-hmm. a, ther- a, a therapy plan, you know, with somebody is every time. It's th- that's just like the evidence has proven it. When we're talking about just um, understanding counseling theories, counseling approaches, just the science behind it all, is that. Uh, Typically, it's an it's a person coming with uh, problems with external sources around them, right. and as they move through the therapy process, it becomes more internalized if the therapist is doing it the right way, you know. And then they start being able to look inside themselves and see what kind of role that they are playing in the situation. Absolutely, and it's only from that self realization, that actualization, if you will, mm-hmm. that true. Healing can begin. You right. know, if I'm like if I'm if I'm angry all the time, and my attitude is, well, people shouldn't be doing stuff that makes me angry, then I'll never I'll never move past that. Right, and so it goes back to you uh, to you discussing like um, the the end result of uh, some the makings of a murder. Yes. Someone who's going to uh, do that to their brother uh, to another human being, it starts out with that comparison, you know, or externalization of the problem. Rather than internalization of the problem. Absolutely. Sorry. Um, you know, we, you used Cain and Abel, right? Mm-hmm. And in that situation, um, we see that Cain took it out on his brother, but who he was really mad at. He was really mad at God. Yeah. And we could make an argument that he may have at some point realized his role you know, and then he became mad at himself, and instead of taking it out on himself, which is kind of the, you know, the the alternative mm-hmm. to internalize it and take it out on self, which what does that end with? The suicide. suicide. You know, uh, he he externalized it and took it out on someone else. That anger. Yes. And yeah. he couldn't he couldn't effectively get God back. Right. So he had to get the person back that was in front of him. Mm-hmm. And and that's what. Uh... You know, that, that's what he was dealing with. What he was, he was so angry at God for making a, an environment in which he could not succeed. Mm-hmm. The problem was God told him exactly how to succeed. He said, if you'll, if you'll do right and do what you're told, then it'll be well for you. Right. Basically, there's, there's two doors. In uh, Genesis 4 there, um, I wonder why. Yeah, Genesis 4. Um, let's see, I want to say verse seven. Yes. Verse seven. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. So there's, there's two, there's two doors you can walk through door. Number one, you're doing well. You're doing things the way God wants you to do it. You're doing it according to the societal rules of propriety. And you go through that door and it's going to be well. Like it was for Abel, except like, that his like brother took Abel. out his disobedience on him. Yes. And then if you go through door number two, well, sin lieth at the door. Mm-hmm. Now, what that means, uh, the, the illustration there is sin, like a dirty, rabid dog, is laying in front of the door. And you can't walk through that door without disturbing the, the dirty, rabid dog. And the dog's going to bite you. Right. Sin lies at that door. Yeah. Can't go through that door. Right. Just just follow the rules of society. And you're responsible for following the rule. There are certain rules set up by society. You know, you um if you're angry all the time, don't figure out why people are don't don't try to figure out um uh what those people are doing to what make you mad. What everybody else is doing to make you mad. Figure out why you're mad at right. them. Like what 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 perception do you have that might be misconceived? That causes you to be angry at them. 
one of the things that, you know, even with these young children that I'm working with, three to five, three to six years old, one of their main goals in their treatment plan is to be able to accept responsibility for their own actions. Absolutely. Okay, so for a three to five year old, what does that look like? For a three to five year old, that says to be that what that says is that if they get in trouble in in the school environment, which is I'm a school based therapist, so mm-hmm. that's going to be in the school environment. They're going to be able to process through that and reason what part they played in whatever event took place so they're going to be able to say i hit johnny Mm -hmm. therefore i didn't get to go to recess Mm -hmm. which is like a whole nother thing we can't even get into today why i don't agree with taking away kids recess but that's what happens in the school environment um and to be able to say i hit johnny therefore i suffered the consequences is the first step to them being able to move forward and to um have to suffer the consequences less right. because they're they're going to realize like the part that they played in that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you got think about a generic apology. Yeah. You know, um, somebody might say, "Well, I'm I'm sorry for the way I acted." Okay, then somebody on the outside looking in might might hear my statement. Well, you're going to have to tell me how you acted. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to have to be able to articulate that. Or what's what, worse is like the I'm um. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, sure. Now, that's, that's yeah, just a, total, like that's a, just total. a non-apology. <laughs> I'm sorry that you feel that way. Right. That's, uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I employ that sometimes whenever people come to me and say, Tony, I just, I'm so offended by the way you teach so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry that you're offended. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry you but feel yeah, that way. But yeah, that's a whole different I'm not thing. really yeah. sorry. I don't care, actually, yeah. at all. Right. Because I want to preach the truth of God's word the way I want to preach the truth yeah. of God's word. But when it comes to an actual slight, we've got to take responsibility. And if I just come to you and say, "Listen, you know, I'm I'm sorry for the way I was before. I'm I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for doing this." Well, that's good. I'm mm-hmm. glad that you manned up and, and was trying to apologize. But we're going to have to get specific, right? Because that's just to me. That's like kind of just glazing the surface or trying to put a, put a blanket on it and like let's yeah. cover it up it doesn't actually address the issue doesn't fix anything right that's uh repentance is is acts twenty six twenty. repent and turn to god and bring forth fruit meat for repentance mm-hmm. paul's very specific there repentance is is not i stop doing all the things that i should and i start doing all the i stop doing all the things that i shouldn't and I start doing all the things that I should. Repentance is I is I change my mind about the things that I've done, mm-hmm. and then I bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. So then it brings about a change in action. Mm-hmm. So somebody might say, "Well, I'm sorry for what I did." Mm-hmm. And now they they may they may have a change of action, but that's to me that's a that's a natural progression and and that can be done on a base level. Like a dog can bite you and then you beat him and you don't feed him. And then the dog realizes, well, I don't need to do that behavior. That dog's never felt any remorse. Right. Right. Well, we don't need to be like dogs. Right. We need to be humans. Now the dog can't articulate why he bit, but if a human, if a, if a brother sins against you, that brother doesn't need to just say, well, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for whatever I did to make you mad. No, you've you got to understand what you did. Yeah. That's how a relationship is is repaired. Right. You know, it, it, it's, it's not enough just to, well, you know, it's a sin against me because every time you walk by and uh, walk, my, walk by my vehicle, you scratch it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad that you're no longer walking by my vehicle. Like a person might say, well, I find then I'll just walk around your vehicle. Well, look, that that's good. Yeah, but, but, but we're we're not friends issue. anymore, right? Because the underlying issue is a lack of respect, right? Yeah. And and that's that that's what in order for a relationship to be repaired, that person needs to be able to articulate. Okay, so we are not friends anymore at this juncture because not because necessarily I was scratching your vehicle, but the lack of respect that I mm-hmm. had for you, mm-hmm. which was causing me to scratch your vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think that's what is. I think that's what you do in the therapy room is you teach people how to understand that. Yeah. Because it's not enough just to say, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I scratched your vehicle. Yeah. Okay, now, that's great, but but do you understand why well, you were scratching your yeah. vehicle and what that entails? Yeah, that kind of like the underneath the surface type of thing. 
Exactly. You know, it kind of reminds me of all the stuff that we're talking about. Like if we use like a couple, a, a man and, and a wife, um, a lot of times issues are there between a man and a wife because, um, you know, I might, I might say I'm having trouble with my husband because he, I don't know, give me something that, because he leaves his clothes all over the floor. I'm trying to choose something that's yeah. generic, you know, but typically what I hear and what I get, um, what I get messages about is I, what do I need to do to, um, to handle my relationship because my husband cheated on me right. or because my husband, I caught my husband looking at porn. Those are like really common ones. How do I right. get over that? How do I, what do I do? You know, mm -hmm. or, you know, what can I do to help him? That's what I get a lot. I'll get messages. What can I do to help him quit? Yeah. And so it's kind of like, well, you know, mm -hmm. that's not the real issue. The real issue is, I mean, that that's part of the issue, but you're never going to be able to fix that issue if it's, what can I do to help him? What can I do to help him? That's external. Mm -hmm. Look, look inside and figure out like what yes. you're, you know, like and, what role you're playing in the situation. Right. And no, does anybody deserve to have to be cheated on? Does anybody deserve to have those things happen nope. to them? No, but we all individually play a role in what's going on in a situation, mm -hmm. and um, it's to be able to get to that point to look internal instead of looking at the other person. Because I might be able to say like, oh, well, um, no, I'm not treating him nicely, but look what he did to me. Right. You know, oh, I'm not, you know, I don't have to do that. Look what he did to me, you know, and that's really the wrong attitude. I'm not doing a very good job communicating this, but I think you can probably help say, me. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to communicate it and I don't care what people think of me. Oh, okay. If your husband cheats on you, you need to look internally to figure out what you did to cause him to do that. Mm -hmm. Right, and that means that does that mean that he shouldn't accept responsibility? No, nope. no, that does not mean. But we're not talking about him. That's we're right. talking about you. And how many times now we've been in situations where I've done some counseling mm -hmm. with people, and you've been in the room as like that uh, extra that that supportive mm -hmm. role, right? And what have I told people in that situation? Same thing. Yeah, the the person we're. The, the person you have an issue with is not here. What's going on? Nothing. I just want to lower this down. Oh. Man, that sound, that's going to be better. I feel like I'm like trying to look over yeah. it at you. Just try to, try to when you're when you're talking, try to talk past it and instead of like directly p -p -p into it. Okay. Is this better? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to, what's going on right there? Nothing. Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Um. So what will happen is... Um, you know, somebody will come in and they'll say, you know, I need help because my husband cheated on me, mm -hmm. you know, and it's usually, but he does this, but he does that, but he does this. And it's never about like what I do, what I do, what I do. Correct. And so I might say to them, okay, so like, I understand that you want to help him and that you want to figure out how to fix the situation, but he's not the one sitting in here. That's you're right. The, you're the one sitting in That's here. That's it. And so we've got to, that doesn't mean that I'm picking on you because you're the one sitting here. You're the one sitting here. So yeah. we've got to work with what's going on with you yeah. and what'll happen because he's not in here. And what'll happen is that ripple effect or that butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. One thing that, you know, you can, you can still fix that cycle or, and repair it by some of the things that you do. Yes. You know? and, well, and that's the thing, you know, with uh, giving therapy to somebody interjecting a person who's receiving therapy into a system helps the system. Right. Absolutely. And that's what a husband and a wife is. It's what a marriage is. Right. And, um, I'm, like I said, b because I don't, I don't care if somebody calls me a racist. I don't care if somebody calls me sexist. I don't care what somebody calls me. I just say these things plain out. Right. And once the shock of them wears off, what's left is, okay, I understand that that makes a lot of sense. And, um, and I'll, I'll tell it to husbands. If husbands, if you have a wife that cheats on you, you need to figure out why she did it. And it's your fault. Mm. You need to take it. You need to think of it just like that. If I had been what I'm supposed to do, this would to be, this wouldn't happen. And it's a really hard, very, very difficult pill to swallow. Yes. Um, because none of what you just said eliminates. Nope. 
the responsibility on the other party. But people hear that. Right, exactly, which is why I'm saying that. And it not only does it not eliminate the responsibility, but you still didn't deserve, no matter, you didn't deserve Nobody for that. Nobody deserved to be cheated on. Right, yeah. So And so it's very difficult to separate those things out because um, in, in your mind, it takes a long time to separate that stuff out, to realize, okay, I didn't deserve this, yet I played a role in it. That's it. You know. So that's That's kind of hard to realize. It goes back to this. Whenever you start thinking about history and you start thinking about your role and what your role would have been in different times in history, when you think about Nazi Germany, don't think you would be hiding Anne Frank in your attic. Normally, you would be the person turning in the Jews. Right. Statistically speaking, you would be the people turning over the Jews to the Gestapo. Mm-hmm. We hope, we we would hope, like looking back, that if we yes. were injected into that situation, that but, we would be the bigger person. But, but that is naive. That's, that's When you think about Auschwitz, mm-hmm. those, those concentration camps, you would be a guard. Yeah. Statistically speaking, you would be a guard. Mm-hmm. And, and once you come to terms with that and you realize, uh, it really gives you a lot more respect for yourself because how in the world can I be sitting here right now um, you know, as, as the good person that I am, it's a stinking miracle. Yeah, right. I mean, if it, it's a miracle that I haven't killed somebody. It's a miracle that I'm a moral person. It's a miracle that I'm a functioning member of society. Did we talk about this the last time um, where you had um, defined humility as? Humility no, is knowing where you fit in the cog. Your, your cog fits in the machine. Yeah. And so that's that's exactly what that is. That is humility. To be able to step back yes. and say, okay, this, yes. is, um, this is the type of human that I am because typically we are. What is that? Somebody, had, somebody put a gif on. Oh, okay. They do that every once in a while. Oh, okay. Um, so, so yeah, that's, I, I wish more people would understand that. Mm-hmm. So, um, if once you understand that and you, you think you, you come from the perspective that you're culpable in every situation that you're in, mm-hmm. then that gives you so much more power because you can actually change it. Right. Absolutely. You can't, you cannot, you cannot change anything from the position of a victim. Mm-mm. So if you're a woman and your husband cheats on you, you can't get any, you can't get any better if you think it's his fault. Right. You well, come, then all that what you're the, doing is you're doing what Cain did. You're doing exactly what Cain did. Yeah. And then you then somebody's going to die. Yeah. It's, right. it's somebody's going to die spiritually, physically, and it could be you. Right. You could Absolutely. end up taking your own life. Yeah. Incidentally, the suicide statistics blew my mind. Mm-hmm. June of 2019 the, is the last CDC. Uh, Center for D- Center for Disease Control uh, statistics for death for cause of death. Yeah, nineteen point two suicide. Nineteen point two percent of teens. Nineteen points. Well, excuse me. Suicide is the third leading cause for death in children ages ten to twenty four. You know, I'm really interested in that because I'm wondering. I, th- I started listening to your cogitations episode earlier, mm-hmm. and you had said something about. The leading cause of death was unintentional accidents or something like that? Yes. Did you say something about that? Yes, yes, unintentional. Okay, so did you go into any research on that? No, I just looked at the pie charts. I just, that's only numbers. I don't know what all that's. Okay, so because that is really interesting because I'm wondering how they're separating out those two percentages, especially with younger children like age 10 to 16 perhaps 17, but yeah. more likely 16, 15 or 16, um, because unintentional death and suicide are kind of linked. And what I mean by that is more than likely, in most cases, a 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old, they are not actually trying to commit suicide Sure. when they actually do commit suicide. So how do you separate? You know, the lines are really... Kind yeah. of blurred in that situation. That's a, and I'm sure there might be some bleed over, but yeah. that doesn't change the fact that suicide is the third leading cause of death mm-hmm. for children 10 to 24. And when you cross the 25th year threshold, mm-hmm. it drops down almost 10%. Mm-hmm. And it is yeah. no longer the third, it's like the sixth. Yeah. And then when you cross the 45th year threshold, suicide is the 
is like accounts for 3.3% of deaths yeah. of 45 and above. Yeah, it's really it's, sad. It's amazing. Well, the reason I was saying that is because the intentional suicide of a young child or the unintentional, which is more than likely, that makes that percentage greater. Sure. So they could, I don't know. Does that make sense? So yeah. the reason I'm saying that is, um, well, I mean, I, I guess just to, just to not separate those two percentages out. It's actually a really extremely common reason for kids kids to die. Right. Is self inflicted. Yes. That, yeah, that's, that's that's the thing. And uh I think I think one thing you're alluding to is I might not necessarily commit suicide when I'm thirteen, but I might think that I'm so worthless that I take unnecessary risk. Yeah. And I might die trying to skateboard off the side of a mountain. Yeah, it's true. So anyway, that's something to think about. So back to self responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, if you're if you're sitting there and you're and you're the victim and you consider yourself the victim, and and here's the thing, I, I don't I, I don't mind what people call me. If uh, I remember, um, what back before we were even married, one of your roommate's friends, um, some guy she was dating just slapped her. Mm-hmm. Little did she know, I knew the guy. Yeah. So I asked, well, what did you do to make him slap you? Yeah. Because I figured she mouthed off or something like that. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. Man or woman, nobody deserves to get hit. Right. Nobody deserves to get hit. But if I go into a bar and I mouth off, I'm going to get hit. Yeah. Man or woman, especially today, man or woman, being a female gets you no grace anymore. Right. So if I understand that and I don't treat myself as a victim, I'm going to play by society's rules. You know what society's rules are? Don't go around being a smart mouth. Yeah. Because through that door. You might get hit. (laughs) Sin lies through that door. Bad things lie through that door. You go around and you do well. Don't be a smart mouth. 99.99% of the times, if you walk around and you're respectful to your fellow man, ain't nobody, even even the worst person in the world, Ain't going to just slap you for no reason. Right. If there's a bear over there and he's asleep, he'll never eat you unless you go poke him. Right. And of course, but of course, you know what your friend did. I was the worst person in the world. Mm-hmm. I was a male chauvinist and all that. But I'm just like, I, I mean, I know this guy. And, and I, I mean, yeah, I could see him slapping you, but he's not going to do it for no reason. Yeah. You know, he's mm-hmm. not going to do it for no reason. Anyway. We've self responsibility. Self responsibility is what we're getting at. That's here. it. That's it. We didn't talk much about anxiety. No, but all of these things probably produce anxiety in people who are listening. And so take some time to just like take yes. a deep breath. That's it. You know, that's how you take a deep breath too. You see how that's like right. You you breathe in through your nose, you let it out your mouth really slow, you know, and you're able to kind of move through it you know i've uh this week i experienced two different kids who used uh, that breathing Mm -hmm. and it's so um just chilling to watch like it's it's very very cool to see a young child um just do something that that should come natural to our bodies as we get older we tend to ignore those just natural ways of releasing anxiety and stuff and we kind of clench on to it and we hold on to it really tightly and and we forget just those basic things which is taking a deep breath and letting the tension out of our bodies our bodies if it's if our bodies are calm and and not tense Mm -hmm. that sends messages to our brains yes our one brain i understand but you get like our everybody's brains yes (laughs) Your your uh your, I just possessive, use the... your possessive pronoun was plural, so the object of that pronoun had to be plural. Right. <laughs> we we each have one brain. Yeah. Right. And I know I know pronouns don't have objects, but anyway, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. I don't know why that sounded weird to me because I said our brains mm-hmm. just like we had a bunch of different ones. Yeah. But uh, all the men coming into the room tell your wives to go to the other room. Well, that doesn't mean that all a man has more has than one more wife. Than one wife yeah. It's, it's just, just weird. men is plural, so right. wives have to be plural. But so our bodies communicate that message to our brain, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it's not saying 
you're in danger. It's saying you are not in danger. And therefore, you're not able. My point is you're not able to be anxious in your mind mm-hmm. and calm. calm in your body. The, That's it. it, it they, they're linked up. And so if you can actually do something to create your actual physical body to relax, then your anxiety is 100%. It is scientifically proven the anxiety will go down. Absolutely. There's just no way that there, those two things can be incongruent. Our bodies and our minds are going to follow each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. You know, so breathing exercises. Yeah. So back to the kids, you know, like mm-hmm. I had a couple of kids that were extremely upset and had gotten really dysregulated. You could see it in their bodies. Their tents are right here. Their face is getting, they're getting all teary eyed and their face is more like squished in. You know, you could see all of this in their bodies mm-hmm. and they took it upon themselves to. Yeah. And when they did that, the tears kind of subsided, their bodies started to relax, and all of the tension that they were they they had pent up and holding on to in their bodies just kind of disappeared and they were able to move on with their day. Mm-hmm. But what happens, grown ups don't really do that. They just hold on so tightly to it and they don't they discount that deep breath. It's so important. I wonder if, if kids kind of naturally intuit that. Uh, I think they do, um, and it. But in, then, at the same time, they become very resistant when you try to teach it. But anybody sure. really does yes. get really resistant when you try but to it teach something. Like witch doctory, right? Right. Know? But it's not. It's just that, like you know, psychology is a pretty new field of science, mm-hmm. relatively speaking. Okay, and whenever it first kind of was introduced, it was more introduced with religion and spirituality and Absolutely. all of those things. And it's only been like. Probably within the last hundred years, maybe 80, 80 to a hundred years, where people have started, and even more so, like in the last twenty or thirty years, when our technology, like brain imaging technology, has gotten yeah. really, really strong and and advanced, that um, scientists and psychologists and you know, um, just medical doctors have realized that our minds and our bodies work together. You think that's so? Like, well, duh, our minds and our bodies work together. Sure, but that has always been something that we've separated out spirituality, mind, our mind, our psyche is all one thing. And then our bodies are another and they're not like linked up. But the fact is that they are. And so when we can make our bodies um, work the right way, then we are typically going to be less mentally um, cluttered and we're going to, we're congruent. Yes. If we, if we understand that our bodies and our, um, our minds are going to work together. Mm-hmm. Well, Paul said he he prayed that our mind, body, and uh, spirit spirit all be preserved blameless. Mm-hmm. Um, I always go to this verse: mind, body, spirit. Mm-hmm. The word for mind is psyche. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you when you psychology, psych, mindology, mm-hmm. you know the L O G O logo or logos, logos, the study of the psyche. Yeah. When you're when you're getting therapy, it's therapy on your soul. Yeah. So it is it is religious in some way. I mean, your <clears throat> well, your spiritual spirituality or your you know that is connected to mm-hmm. it, but you can't separate that from your body. Nope. You know, and so that's something that's very um, it's it's easier to teach in children mm-hmm. than it is adults. Is it because they're more open to new things or? Um, yeah, and I think that it's because too that they're not. Um, they are oh I, I I'm losing the word right now, but they they do tend to um they're more Malleable. basic oh, okay. uh, so what what's the word I'm looking I don't know. for uh uncomplicated uh, yeah they're okay, so kids the kids I deal with mm-hmm. they have baggage sure. they're obviously like with me because there's a but lot of stuff that's going on, but they um you know they're they're Left side of their brain, that's the language center of the brain, it's not fully on board yet. Sure. And so they're dealing with um, with things in an abstract, more, um, I don't want to say animalistic, but like mm-hmm. a more primal type of way, yeah. you know? And so uh, you, you might be able to see them naturally implement the breathing Sure. You know, and you, then, then you might an adult because by the time they're adult, like all of the centers of the brain are on mm-hmm. and some of them are working at sometimes, some of them are working at other times and they're not all congruent because there's so much going on. Well, I remember whenever I was a child, 
And um, for instance, I, I could, it's like I could feel anxiety and stuff build up in my body and I would, it would release. Mm-hmm. I would find a release. Mm-hmm. And um, growing up, there were these trees called, we called them Formosa trees. They are not called Formosa trees. It's but it's Mimosa mm-hmm. is what they're, is, but everybody, everybody in Shawtown that I ever knew I'm called Formosa trees, like mm-hmm. with an F. I don't know if that was a colloquial thing or if other people call them Formosa trees or not, but. Okay. Anyway, um, they grow really, really fast, and they're kind of thick. And when I say thick, I mean it would, you know, in, in a few months you get a, a stalk as big as my forearm. And I had a machete, mm-hmm. and I would spend hours and hours and hours um, clearing. I, I cleared a whole hillside of Formosa trees. Um. And I got so adept at swinging that machete and I got, well, first off, I got really adept at sharpening it because, you know, I had to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're going to. Because you're going to sl- sling mm-hmm. it. You want that stuff that it, you're slinging it. And cut. it was, oh man, it was so satisfying when I could swing that machete and in one lick, I could chop clean through a tree as big around as my forearm is now, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so what you were doing is you were. You were releasing that through yes. the play. Yes. I mean, it, we wouldn't necessarily. I mean, that's what that is, and yeah. that's that's what children do. They communicate through us mm-hmm. uh, to us through their through their play and not their words necessarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was it was quite satisfying, mm-hmm. you know. And and to this day, I enjoy, you know. That's the reason exercise and and yoga and moving our bodies. Um, are so helpful. It's not on mistake that the people who seem to be more mentally stable and more mentally healthy are also more physically stable and more able to, to do things from, you know, like get out and exercise and stuff like that. So, um, I was at a Greece seminar and I heard a guy tell a story about a man who was, who had lost his son. Mm -hmm. Like this was a young man. The son was young. Yeah. Very tragic. And he never did weep. And he went out back, he chopped wood. And he went out back and he chopped wood. And he chopped wood to the point where people were worried about him. And then about the third day of him chopping wood, he comes down with the maul, whack, and break, and he misses and he breaks the head of the maul clean off. Mm. And then he's looking at the, at the, at the maul handle. And he just throws it, ha! And it penetrates the wall of the shed and sticks there. And he goes down on his knees and he just breaks loose. I mean, he wails. And and that was I that don't was know, his like his body releasing. I guess so, man. In a very natural so. way. Yeah, it was it was guttural. It was like ah, and he threw it and. Like, and so, what happens is if that does stay inside you and you don't actually get it out. Yes. To me, that's a healthy way of getting it out. He was mm-hmm. doing something that was very natural and healthy to get it out. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he held on to that and he did it some other kind of way. It could eventually end up being um, taken out on somebody else. Oh, yes. Or taken out on himself. Yes. And then that's, I mean, that's the reason that we have such high instances of, of heart disease and, and strokes and Mm -hmm. all of those things is because we hold on to it instead of releasing it, you know, in a healthy way. What, what did Forrest Gump do whenever he was feeling stressed? He ran. (laughs) He ran. Right. He was getting that out. In a natural, healthy way. Yes, that's very yeah. hyperbolic, but it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of truth. It still makes a lot of sense, you know. And one day, he just decided he just was done running. Yep. He just let it all out, I guess. And everybody. <laughs> I think a lot of times today, though, we have this mis... Um, there's still so much stigma around mental health and, um, and being aware of our mental state. It's just crazy. I think... Um, okay, so we're, I'm coming up on being 40. So we're kind of in this generation where maybe the generation under us is a, probably a little bit more mentally healthy or maybe more mentally aware of what's going on with their health, their their mental health, you know. But I think that um, the older the generation, the less likely we are to concentrate on 
our mental health as a um, as a factor in our physical health. Yeah, you know. So we have a comment. Okay. Um, this is in the We Talk Truth group, so I'm not going to mention his name. Okay. <clears throat> I'm thinking about what you're saying. My wife cheated on me and I blamed myself for a long time. She never respected me. It wasn't until I stood up for myself that she decided to cheat on me. She cited the reason was I pushed God on her too much. And I think I did. And I do take personal responsibility for that. But that's about the only thing I did wrong in the marriage relationship. So that's enough. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Uh, when, whenever I say that whenever, like if you have a spouse that cheats on you, you need to figure out what you did to cause that. That I, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to accept the full blame. You're not, you're not, right. yeah. full, you're not accepting full responsibility yeah. because obviously uh, she, you know, she shouldn't have, first off, she shouldn't have done that. Right. Number two, that's no reason to go cheat on somebody. She right. just didn't like what you were doing. Yeah. And it, the, the responsibility, she also has responsibility. Right. She the cheating a, is her sin. The cheating is her sin. Right. And, the, and she has responsibility to come to you and say, listen, you're pushing God on me too much. I don't like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's making me not want to be married to you. Mm-hmm. And y'all, 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 then y'all together as a unit have a responsibility to deal with that. Right. So that your responsibility would be to understand that you're pushing God on her too much. Her responsibility is to, to communicate that you're pushing God on yeah, her too much. Absolutely. Then together as a cohesive, a cohesive unit, you have a responsibility to deal with that issue. Um, so that's from a very healthy, it's a very healthy thing to say, yeah, I can see where she was coming from. That mm-hmm. is not a victim mentality. Right. Absolutely. That is, that woman shouldn't have did that. That shouldn't have did that. Shouldn't, shouldn't have, done have done that, that. to me. Right. That woman shouldn't have done that to me, and I'm angry. Yeah, you know, and but there, I can see why. Yeah, and there there is a line to be drawn there where you can kind of go too far in accepting blame. You know, because it's just kind of like you said. That you gets know, you into can't, like self deprecation. Right. And, yeah. Like from a healthy standpoint, you can say, "All right, there is there are some things that I'm realizing about myself that may have driven her to this point." Yes. Okay. But that, that's it. That's it. That's, that, it. that's not, and, and here's the thing. You could say, well, um, an unhealthy way of, of, of responsibility acceptance is um, thinking, overanalyzing everything you've done and, and not understanding that, that sometimes they're just evil people in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I've said this before. Sometimes your only responsibility in a situation is bad luck. You were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. So you couldn't, in other words, just because you're responsible, maybe one tenth of a percent, doesn't mean you could have changed anything. Right. Absolutely. Because you still got to evangelize. Mm-hmm. You were still going to push God on her. Yeah. I mean. Right. How I mean, would you not do that? Right. Absolutely. You know that that's beyond your control. Well, and I mean, there's in this, you know, what we're looking at is her saying you push God on me too much, like. That may have been like Great. an unreasonable, what do you mean too much? right? Exactly. That may have been an unreasonable exactly. accusation. You know, exactly. perhaps you really didn't push God on her too much. Perhaps you were just the epitome of a good husband who was trying to save his wife's soul. You know, exactly. Um, and so there's you know, there's all of that going mm-hmm. on there. There's there's that's very deep, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of dynamics going on there. That's right. But to be able to say, okay, I can step back and I can say. This is this is where I fit. That's very humble and very eye opening to help yeah. you be able to move forward in life and to be able to accept responsibility for what you do. Absolutely. You know? So, just to let everybody know that's listening, there's like nine people listening in one place and a few other people listening in another. Facebook is really weird acting right now, and I think it's because we're mobile. I'm using Amiibo Hotspot and. I'm just, this is the only, very rarely do we ever, do we ever go this long and talk about stuff. That's um, like this, where you only have like one comment. (laughs) One comment. Yeah, that's weird. Especially when I say some bold stuff, like I said at the beginning. Yeah. I usually at least get people want to argue with me. Right. But. uh, Oh, you will eventually, I'm sure. Probably will eventually. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so like I'm getting all kinds of like slow internet, restart the stream at 480 or 360 to. You know, all this, that, and the other. So, anyway, um, maybe maybe we got this video out here good enough. 
Um, maybe we helped you a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything we've discussed, by all means, let us know. Communicate with us through the nearchurches.com Facebook page. Uh, you can message us. Um, I've set this up to where if you want to, if you want to uh, have a consultation with, with uh, Labeth and me, um, we can set that up. I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be free. Um, it's something that we would charge for. Um, our time is, our time is valuable, mm -hmm. but, um, for a fee, we can consult with you and we can get you in uh, contact with folks in your area that can help you. And that's part of what your fee would cover, by the way, is the time it takes to do some research and get you in contact with some good people. So, uh, anyway, other than that, if you want to, you can support us on Patreon at near church at www.patreon.com forward slash near churches. LaBeth, do you think we kind of wrapped everything up? And yeah, I think I would just like to say while you're listening to this, um, and you hear some of the things that Tony has really boldly said before reacting just take a deep breath and mm -hmm. think about what it is that he's saying. This is very logical. This is very rational what he's saying. There's there's a time for we're getting angry and a time for getting very upset. And it's it's not before you have taken a deep breath mm -hmm. and processed the information. That's it. I don't say things without thinking them through. Well, we all should be that mm -hmm. way. That's right. So anyway, <clears throat> well, listen, I appreciate everybody. Um, maybe as, if, as the years go by, as we uh, get better at broadcasting on location instead of in the studio, maybe these things get better. Uh, oh, man. One sister said, I just got thrown out and had to find you again. That's weird. That's I'm telling you, Facebook is acting weird. All right. So, well, for... Then if you're listening, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to get off here and I want to work very hard on getting this audio uh, fixed and, and getting the video uploaded onto uh, our YouTube channel. And incidentally, you can catch this on YouTube at Cogitations Podcast. And eventually, uh, once we get three or four episodes, I'm going to make a podcast channel on Podbean. And this will have its own podcast channel. It won't be video. It'll be audio. But that'll be good. All don't right. don't hesitate to send us questions or to express any kind of responses um, to the live video so that maybe we can continue to build on this and help you in the best way we can. Cool beans. All right. We'll see you guys. <laughs>